What's going on, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast in the studio with Jay Mack. What's up, baby? What up? What up? So, look, it is um, week five, final part of this G Code series that we've been doing the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, week one, gratitude, week two, genetics, week three, grind, and week four was group. And this week, I'm just going to kind of bring it all together, you know, for everybody. And so, um, if you've been listening or watching, you know, over the last several weeks as we've gone through this, you know, one of the things that you've started to pick up on, if you've been implementing some of the steps that we've been talking about is our superpower that's unspoken that we all know about. If you've gotten into the book, you heard Ryan talk about it though, and that we all have that one superpower of focus. And that's really what if you've been implementing these steps that we've been talking about the last month, if you really think about it, that's what you've been noticing is an improvement in overall focus. Um, and, and that's where, as, as Ryan puts it, we use our superpower of focus to combat the force of average. And the force of average is everything in life that battles against you to distract you from what it is your true purpose and calling in, in life. Um, you know, so, you know, gratitude, how we start the day, five, five things that we're, we're thankful for, that we're appreciative of, right? Get that mindset right for the day. The genetics, what am I putting into my body? Am I moving my body during the day? Are we prioritizing that? The grind, the work, what were the wins that day? What was something positive, um, you know, that happened? What was a win that we had? You know, with regards to work, with regards to our team, with regards to our uh, ever ending to do list, right? Those critical tasks that we're working on. Did we win the day by accomplishing those things? That's the grind. Then that group, like who are we surrounding ourselves with, Jonathan? Uh, who are we spending our time with? Who are we um, being filled up by and who are we pouring into? You know, are the people in our life just constantly draining us of energy? Um, are their goals so far out of alignment with our own personal goals that they're distracting us from being the best version of ourselves, you know, or are they people that at the end of the day, they're just for me, their goals are different than mine and they, they, they may be and should be, but even though there's differences between us, are we still for each other and are we helping each other accomplish what it is that we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. And so all four of those pieces combined if you really focus on those things and you get them in, in alignment with, with who you are, the clarity comes, the focus comes. And all of a sudden you start seeing when you're focused and this is with anything, right? This is whether you're in the studio working on your music, whether I'm, you know, working on recruiting or I have a dog that I'm working with or a particular uh, client for a particular session. If I'm completely dialed in and I'm the best version of myself in that moment, my focus is out of control and what I'm able to accomplish in those moments is probably far more than someone who's distracted is able to accomplish in hours, days, weeks, months. Yeah. Right. And I think the biggest thing for me, because if you've been listening, you know that we at the big dog podcast have been kind of going back through the G code and doing this ourselves. The biggest thing for me has been that that sense of focus that I gained by attempting and trying to complete the four steps. Yeah. I've gained a sense of urgency as well, because I feel like a lot of times we're aware of the issues that we're having, or we're aware of the challenges that we face, yeah. but we might not necessarily attack them with a sense of urgency because we have so many other things going on in our lives. Well, yeah. And I think that's a big part that, that comes into play um, for anybody who attempts to implement the G code into their life is the simplicity of it. Like these aren't crazy things that you have to blow your whole life up to try to, to plug in. Yeah. It's not a drastic overall lifestyle change, No, but the results of implementing these simple things is a drastic life change. Exactly. And a complete overhaul really. And it, it's, it simplifies life to the point that really anything that you want out of life, you can get to, you can accomplish because you're just worried about four simple tasks. 
Yep. And those four simple tasks are now your barometer for your day. And it, it just changes everything, how you look at it. It just makes it so, so simple. For sure. You know, and you're not worried about, and we've talked to previous episodes, like keeping up with the Joneses and what's going on over here and what's going on over there. None of that matters. What am I thankful for today? Did I, did I get a workout in? Did I not eat fast food twice today? <laughs> you know, did I accomplish the critical tasks at work? Did I spend time, you know, with, with my family? Who did I focus my time on today? Who did I focus my energy on today? And some days it is my family. Some days it's you. Some days it's the admin team. Some days it's my trainers. Some days it's me getting on a plane and going to another location and focusing on that team of trainers. Some days it's me. Some days I got to be the group. Because I, me and all my personalities have to come together and I got to focus in on them and keep everybody in check. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think what you're also saying is that if some days you need to take a me day mm -hmm. in relation to the G code and the steps that you're kind of going through, yeah. that's perfectly okay because you take a mental health day or a day to really look back at what you've accomplished or look at yourself. That might just be informing your gratitude yep. for when you do pick everything back up. Have we talked about um, the floats on here? No, I don't believe we have. Okay. So you talked about that, like that me day, right? So <laughs> last year, um, <laughs> I guess maybe September I started doing this and I haven't done it in a couple months. I, I should probably do it, but there's a thing called uh, like floating, right? And they're like pods mm -hmm. and you go to like a spa or something. Oh, this is sensory deprivation, it, right? I, some, I, I don't know what, I, again, Jonathan with the terms and I'm just not that smart. So I don't know, but it's, it's a pod and you go and I've read about it. It's like, all right, it's this salt water at body temperature. And um, you go in the float tank and you can, have it open or closed. You can have sound on or no sound. Um, it can be light or dark. There can be an array of colors or it can be pitch black. Uh, some people don't like to close the pod um, because it's like they freak out or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought the pod was going to be like this huge thing, like the size of the room. That was not the case. Um, the pod was more so maybe the size of this table here, the two tables. Yeah. Like width wise, maybe a little longer wise. Yeah. yeah. So maybe seven feet long once you're inside, maybe four, five feet wide. Uh, anyway, you get in the pod. I thought, you know, it was a bunch of water cause you get in there and float, right? No son. Like my big ass gets in this float and there's maybe eight to 10 inches of water. How did that work? And out? I'm like, how am I going to float in this? Like, my ass is going to be touching the bottom. <laughs> like this, can't, this isn't going to work. I'm just not going to float in this. And so I, I was a little thrown off. I go in the room. You got to shower first. Then you get in the tub. You get in the, in the tank naked. You can get in there in shorts. You can do whatever you want. Thank God and they make you shower I'm like, first. But you got to rinse off everything first. And then when you get out, you have to, to shower again. Okay. Because it's like salt water and whatever. So anyway, you know, uh, I jump into this, this tank. I pull the top down. I kill the lights. I just want it pitch black. I lay back. I'm floating immediately. I'm like, what the hell is going on? This is so weird. I was just so shocked that me, I'm floating. And in this little bit of water, I'm not touching the bottom. So next thing you know, I start having this overwhelming sense of like spinning. And I'm like, there's not room in this thing for me to spin. I can't be spinning right now. I would not stop spinning. So I flipped it open. Realized clearly I'm not rotating around. It can't happen. It's just what was happening, like sensory, like to my senses, it felt like I was rotating. So really weird. I pull the thing back down, whatever. So that first, it's an hour. You're in this thing. Then the lights cut on and it's like, all right, you're done. Please go shower. First time was super stressful, very frustrating. Second time I go, I'm asleep within five minutes in this thing. So I start going like every week. Every other week, I started rotating like a massage and a float tank. Some days I would do both. I was like, this is great. And it's a little excessive. 
a little bit crazy. But for me, during that time when I was doing that and prioritizing it, I was killing it. I was killing it because it was just getting a little bit of separation, focus on me. And it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like crazy stress or anything during that season, but it was just good to do something that just took all noise away because there's so much noise in my life Mm -hmm. from everywhere. And nobody knew I'd go except for like my assistant and me. I was out. Devin would know. But there was no getting a hold of me. One time I messed up, left my watch on. Sucker kept beeping and vibrating. I had to open it through the watch out. It was driving me nuts. Like, you can't bring your phone in there. You shouldn't bring your phone in there. Nothing. Because mm-hmm. it's literally pitch black and silent. For me, that was self-care. So then I would start falling asleep in there. But then it got where I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'm just floating. But the ideas I was having creatively yeah. things I was coming up with. I'm like, this is amazing. And so that for some people it might be, Hey, I'm going for a walk in the woods. Some people it might be, I'm going to go to the gym. That's where I get my clarity. When I start throwing iron around blasting boys to men and driving 90 miles per hour on the interstate. There you go. Boys to men. Yep. Or you get in a float tank or you, you know, who knows what, but you've got to figure out what part of that, is, that works for you. That all plays into this because it helps you to get focus, right? And that self-care time is important. If you're just constantly taking care of everybody else, constantly pouring into everybody else, but you're ignoring yourself, whether it's physically, mentally, whatever, that doesn't add up right. You're never going to be focused because you're always just tired. Mm -hmm. You're just tired. And that's hard to do, particularly for a lot of type A people who are fixers. You know, th- this can be challenging when you're focusing on what I'm grateful for. Did I focus on my genetics today? Did I focus on my work? Did I focus on my group? The work is always the easiest for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found some wins today. Because it's the most tangible. It's the most right, right there. It's right there. So then for those type A's who are competitive, though, now all of a sudden you're getting points, though, for different things. You're paying attention. It forces you. Oh, mm-hmm. let me get this point. Let me make sure I get this workout in. Or right, now, nah, let me eat, make a little better choice. You know, all my food today. Um, let me get that point. Hey, did I, did I jot down what I'm thankful for? You know, let me get that point. And it, it forces you, if you create it as a habit. To, am I perfect with it? No, I'm not perfect with it. I don't get in the app every day. I don't jot down in my notebook every day. But more often than not, I do. Mm-hmm. And and that's it. I mean, some days just get away from you. But if you can get to where you, it is just without thought, the things that happen in your day, and you put these things together collectively, your, your life changes. Yeah, I feel like if we could say that there would be a fifth step to the G code, it would be G for getting there. Just kind of <laughs> yeah. get it, just kind of getting there. Getting there. I'm getting there. And But getting there only comes from doing. Like, you've got to do it. You just got to start. That's it. It's hard for a lot of people. It's just starting. I know it's hard for me. Yeah, for sure. Anything new, right? It's like, oh, this is just another thing I've got to do. But if I, if I told you, you know, that if you started this, all right, in 90 days from now, you are going to be exponentially better as a human being. Like I guarantee it because it's impossible for you to not be better off personally. It's impossible for you to not be better off professionally. It's impossible for you, if you're listening out there, to not be a better spouse, a better mother or father, a better sibling, a better son. It's literally impossible if you implement these things in your life three months from now to not be a better person. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like most people could look at 90 days in the future and think, okay, this is my likely paycheck. This is what I'm going to get paid because those are physical, tangible outcomes and results from the work that you put in. But when you're putting in work on these kind of abstract ideas Mm -hmm. about how to improve your mental state and not necessarily how you just physically do things, it's hard to see those tangible results. For sure. But I, I would go as far as to say that in 90 days, you will see gains in your bank account. You will see gains in your hobbies. But it's hard to tell people that, you know, it's hard. It's hard to say like, oh, you're going to see this. It's easy to tell people that. It's hard to, um, 
for me, it's easy to tell people that it's hard to receive that. Yeah. And the thing is, this isn't like, Hey, this isn't get rich quick. This isn't, you know, do this and, and you're going to see X, Y, and Z. It, what you will see is the, is the life change. Okay. You're not going to become a gajillionaire. You know, you're not going to have an extra hundred grand in your account in 90 days. I mean, maybe you do that, that, there's plenty of people listening, plenty of friends of mine who they implement some of this stuff. Yeah, that absolutely could be their reality, you know, just because of things that they do and their business. But I also know most of us out here who are listening, everything that this is about has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with your business. By, by default, there will be improvements there. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, it's all about how you approach life and how you wake up in the day. And is everything negative? Is everything in the doldrums? Is everything just, ah, are we pessimistic? Mm-hmm. Or are we just waking up with a winning attitude knowing that we're going to kick the day's ass regardless of what comes? Yeah, because honestly, the most difficult challenge I feel like is waking up each and every day and being okay with yourself and the life that you've kind of created for yourself. And that's a hard challenge. Yeah, and I think a cool thing to play off of that, though, is just because it's a life that you've created, doesn't mean it's a life that you're creating or a life that you can't change Mm -hmm. because and go from there. This is just where we're at right now. What steps are you doing though to, to move you forward? Mm -hmm. And as long as you're moving forward, I think everybody can go to bed at night knowing, Hey, I'm winning. I'm moving forward. You don't have to be moving forward at a sprint. You can be moving forward at a crawl right now in the certain season of life. And that's cool. Moving forward getting better growing improving and for everybody that's different that's where you just got to figure it out and that's and you start to figure it out by looking at okay what am i thankful for today and you start to see that that consistency in the things that you're grateful for i mentioned this during the gratitude episode for me the consistent things are my wife my kids dogs these are the consistent things that are almost always there My wife and kids are there every day in that part. Like, cause that's the most important thing to me. And I'm so thankful for them. I'm so thankful, you know, for the, for the, the way the feedback I get from people about my kids. I'm so thankful that anytime they spend time with people that they're like, man, Hey, Logan is a really respectful young man. Hey, Logan's really willing to jump in and help out. Hey, you know, Kiki is, you know, a real strong leader. Kiki, you know, she, she's always willing to, to, to help somebody out or, or bring somebody along or, you know, Logan's always willing to have somebody included, you know, or, or notice somebody who's maybe outside of the circle a little bit and try to bring them in. Like, these are things that I'm very thankful for. And what I'm really thankful for is they got a mama who creates those things, you know, in them. Right. But that's how you start to figure out if you're unsure of what's most important to you, or you might think certain things are important to you. Start paying attention to what you put down day in and day out is what you're thankful for. And if that's not in alignment with what you think is most important to you, you got to audit yourself a little bit because you can't say the things that you're most thankful for are going to be the things that are most important to you. Now, if you've got a wife and you've got kids, and what you're putting down, they're not on there. You're putting down there, I'm I, the Lambo, <laughs> my boat, my shoe collection. My, you got to reprioritize, brother. Like, you've got to change things up. Because what happens is if those are what you're prioritizing is most thankful, and that's what you think is most important, that is, that is, the things you're thankful for are your priorities got to be in alignment and you can't be thank you can be thankful for the Lambo and the shoes, but not more than your spouse and your kids. You just can't, at least I can't see how you can be. And if you are, I mean, I guess you can be, yeah, you definitely can be, you definitely can be, but that relationship with your spouse and that relationship with your kids will be lacking sooner rather than later. Yeah. You know, and there's that, that balance piece. And so, you know, this will take you through a process day in and day out that almost centers you, you know, and you figure out what's really important and what really matters. And so I just, I I encourage everybody, everyone, as we've been doing for the last four weeks, 
start implementing these steps. You know, if you haven't, you know, gone on Amazon and picked up the book, we've we told you shoot an email to the Big Dog Podcast at joshwilson.dog, put your name and address, you know, in the body of the email, and just put G code in the subject line. Boom, we'll get a book out to you. Yep, you might even get a response from me in my sultry voice. There you go. You might even get something from Jonathan. So, you know, we'll get that sent out to you because I believe the impact on us as like as a culture, if people got dialed in and started implementing these simple, simple things. It's crazy. I mean, out of the employees that you've given the G code to, do you think that you've seen a significant shift in not only the way that they work, but them as people, which is more important at the end of the day? Um, I would probably say we're probably 50, 50 at best as far as who's even read it. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't force right? everybody to read um, it. Um, but I think that those that have read it, um, and have attempted to implement it, like several staff mentioned to me weekly, Oh yeah, I saw that you know, this G code, G code, or that really helped a lot. That really helped me to move past a certain thing. That really helped me to dial in my focus. That book, Josh, when you were talking about making that switch from my job at the bank to becoming a dog trainer, and I being a dog trainer as a lifestyle, not a job, without focus, it's impossible to perform this job. This lifestyle is impossible without focus. And that's why when I found the G code, that's why I bought a ton of them and start giving them out to everybody because I want everybody to win, Mm -hmm. but you can't win at this if you're not focused and things don't, and we over compliment, over compliment. We do not over compliment. We over complicate Mm -hmm. (laughs) as, as a society, as people, we over complicate everything. And this just makes it so damn simple. So simple. So I don't know. Let us know. Shoot us an email. We'll get a copy of the book out to you. If you got questions about this stuff, you know, you can email in, you can DM me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, I could talk about this stuff all day. I just think it's super important and I'm not perfect at it by any means. Nope. Never. We never are. I mean, who's going to be, but it is a constant that challenges me day in and day out. And I do my best to, to execute. And so I'm better than I would be without it. And I'm trying to get better every day moving forward, right? Yes, sir. That's it. All right. Take us out, Jonathan. Appreciate you guys.